Hello and welcome to the Capital Wasteland. More specifically, to Arafu. Across this crumbling highway are a number of small details that we can discover. And now that I have, I present to you 5 things you may have missed in Fallout 3's Arafu. Starting us off we have the name of the town and how it came to be. Throughout the world of Fallout 3, settlements are cleverly named after a specific thing or a collective of people. Megaton and Little Lamplight are two great examples of this, and Arafu is no different. When approaching the broken remains of the small town, we can see the leftovers of what was once the highway's traffic sign. After years of erosion, the sign reads Exit 150A, Arafu. Next exit, Miles. It's obvious that the sign doesn't read the way as intended, and Arafu is nothing more than the remains of the word, careful. Did you know that Arafu is a real world village found in Romania, not too far from the castle that belonged to Vlad III, Prince of Wallachia? Some of you may know him by his more barbaric name, Vlad the Impaler. Romania is home to many myths and legends, most notably being vampires. This might have been intentional since the entire quest of Arafu revolves around a group of humans following the vampiric trait of consuming blood for nourishment. If it is, hats off to whoever named this town for doing their research and naming the town in such a relevant and creative way. After completing the town's main quest, Blood Ties, you can return to one of the residents, Karen Shenzi. Our first interaction with her was bitter to say the least. But after helping the town, Karen shows her gratitude by marking five new locations onto our pit boy Dickerson Tabernacle Chapel, Five Axles Rest Stop, Fort Bannister, Rockbreaker's Last Gas, and Shale Bridge. Collectively, you can acquire some pretty good loot, unique weapons, and enemies, along with the location of another settlement. Below the overpass are several wrecked boats, decaying piers, and a battered caravan. Nothing spectacular to see other than the lone Nuka-Cola Quantum sitting atop the wooden post. But if we dive under the murky waters and take a look around, we can find the husk of a pre-war car. Beside the resting vehicle are the remains of a single skeleton. This particular set of bones have been attached to cinder blocks, preventing it from floating to the surface and being discovered. Nearby we can find a silenced 10mm pistol, and an ammunition box. This style of killing is a reference to the method used in gangster movies and novels. This particular technique of dipping a person's feet into wet cement and waiting for it to dry before tossing them into a body of water goes by several different names. Concrete shoes, cement shoes, or my personal favourite, the Chicago overcoat. Back in 2016, a body was found on a Brooklyn beach that had actually used this technique, and to this day is the only recorded case of it being used. And lastly, back up on the overpass, we can encounter the delusional Brayley Ewers. This woman sees Arafu as a village filled with laughing children and freshly planted begonias. It clearly isn't, and our first interaction has her thinking we're a delivery man bringing her a full catalogue, which we're not. After rescuing the town, we can visit her, and she has the delightful idea of baking some cookies as a personal thanks for keeping her safe. But after she hands the cookies over, they appear to be nothing more than rusty tin cans. Thanks. And there we have it, 5 things you may have missed in Fallout 3's Arafu. Before you go, I would like to remind you of 5 things you can do to support the channel. Comment, like, share, subscribe, and enable notifications. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next adventure.